Anything else about uh, sort of confronting the, the generational gaps before we pass on? Any questions in the, in the audience? I'm um, going to uh, mark market content that you roll out for salespeople. Mm -hmm. one, um, just you know, on the technical side, how, how, how are you hosting it? How are you pushing it out there? And um, are you doing? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you making it available to salespeople? Are you pointing out to the manufacturers' content directly? Both. Uh, right now, our CFO actually handles most of it. Um, he's a very techy CFO. Uh, I've, I don't know off the top of my head the name of the software we're using. That uh, they they can't download content onto their iPads. We control it all from a central location. I forget the name of it right now. But a lot of the video content we're using, YouTube hosts it. We don't host it ourselves. Um, physical flyers, PDFs, that kind of stuff. We're usually hosting it. Um, but we have a list of the manufacturer's apps that we think are good, and we'll push those out to their iPad. So a lot of the manufacturer content is what we're using right now. There are tons of calculators out there uh, that can really help when you're out in the field. Um, so we try, and like I said, we'll do the, the searching for those apps and then and give it to them as we see fit. We use Mass360. Uh, it's a cloud-based mobile device management, and it allows us to do the same thing, and we can push down... Any, any kind of file to the iPad, and there's a app catalog. So we don't push down the apps and make them required, but we say go to this app catalog, and these are the ones that we suggest. Because at first, when we first deployed it, we were doing that, just pushing down all these apps, and you go turn on an iPad, and it would take an hour before you could start using it because it had to download all these all these apps, and you know, and it also give you reports of how much, how often they're using it, but so now we just tell them to go to the app catalog. But um, you know, that's that's we're doing the exact same thing and pushing that stuff down to our salespeople, and it's great because you can push down Excel files, PDFs, you know, and all that stuff. And there's you know, it's a file management system, so you can put company documents, so they can go underneath there and get their credit apps. So when they're meeting with a customer, there's credit apps right there, always up to date. Um, job information worksheets, and then you can go into in, in individual products and product categories and stuff like that with PDF files as well. So it sounds like in addition to managing the content, uh, a good MDM helps you with security, helps oh, yeah. you with training because you've got a known quantity, a known universe of, of apps and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting, so uh, we're putting these tools in the hands of our salespeople Increasingly, there's you know foremen on the job, and they've got the same sort of thing. So, let's let's shift a little bit towards uh, you know what happens within our walls, uh, particularly in warehouse operations. Increasingly, there are tools available to share and leverage what's happening in our warehouses with our customer base and and, and our supplier base. Uh, what kind of interesting things are are happening there, Robert? I know you've got some some pretty cool things cooking. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on, I guess, in the warehouse. Um, new technologies, some of which I'm going to talk about we're not using, but I've been reading about. Some of you may. Um, the two that stand out the most to me are voice directed picking and light directed picking. So voice directed picking is literally where you got a headset on your head and you got a microphone and it's telling you where to go to pick. Now I really like that because it frees up a hand because most of us probably have RF guns, right? The big clunky RF guns, the scanning. So it's always got to be in your hand. You're putting it down to do stuff. And now you're, you've got an extra hand free and you're able to walk around the, the warehouse and, and talk to the computer using very simple, short, you know, uh, keywords to receive and pick and, and do things. Now that's a very, very expensive, you know, implementation. I don't think it will ever come to Womack Electric uh, anytime soon. But just like any of those new technologies, you know, it stops, starts at the very top, and then once that market's saturated, it comes down to, you know, the, the mid-sized businesses, and then down to the small-sized businesses. Um, another one similar to that would be light-directed picking, and essentially it's a bunch of LED lights, and the picker is following these lights to go to get to what they need, right? I mean, so you just follow um, the lights to go get what you want. Uh, it's, it's real life GPS. Yeah, there you go, real life <laughs> GPS. But let's let's talk a little bit more futuristic. Now this is, you know, I love listening and, and reading about new technologies. Everybody's heard of Google Glass, right? I think we are gonna see that come into our business 
much faster than something like voice detected picking or light uh, directed picking because now you can do both with that glass. And you know, any of us could right now go purchase a Google Glass, okay? And it, you know, I know it creeps a lot of us out thinking that somebody could be walking around right now constantly recording what we're doing, but if you can imagine in a warehouse with Google Glass, you could have light directed picking. The, the glass could, you know, show up over your screen telling you where to go down your warehouse, where to turn, and then when you go to the product, it's got a camera, it can scan the, the product. I mean, it, and I'm just, my mind's going crazy here. You know, you could be dumping out, you know, a bunch of lock nuts or something on the on the table and it could help count for you. You know, so I mean, this just, you know, this that's, that technology really is there. It's just now starting to be developed right down in her uh, neck of the woods. and. Um, you know, and for fifteen hundred bucks, you can go buy one of those as a developer and start start playing around with that technology. Um, two years ago, I don't know if we're we're at Epcor Clips, and I don't know if any of y'all use Clips, but two years ago, they had a demo, and this was a real live demo. It was programmed, the guy using real software. It was not some stage thing, but uh, what he was doing was he had a Microsoft uh, Connect. For, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, it's that thing that the kids use on the Xbox to stand in front of it and move. They have a developer platform, and the computer it was connected to a computer, and he was mocking uh, uh, a warehouse manifest that, the, that just came in. And what he did was he walked up to the computer, and when, as soon as he walked up, the, the Connect scanned him, did face recognition, signed him into the ERP system. So he didn't have to walk up and sign in with a you know keyboard and mouse. And then what he did was he basically held up the manifest and it had a QR code on it. The the scanner, I mean the um, Connect scanned that and received it right into the system. So he did that whole transaction in a matter of just a few seconds versus what it could take three, four, five minutes, you know, doing that as a manual process. So, and I thought that was really neat. You know, that's a technology that we could be see coming in the next five to 10 years, but you combine all that with glasses on your head and, you know, earpiece in your ear, and you're, now you're doing all of them. And people are starting to become very comfortable with voice as well. Keep that in mind. I mean, everybody's got iPhones or a Google phone and they're saying, okay, Google or Siri and, and talking into it and the, having those voice recognitions and they're getting really well. And, and so that's, that's some technology that I think that we're going to see um, come to the warehouse in the future. Um, you know, RFID, I mean, that's not new. That's been around for forever. Uh, we, we have it, but one of the things we're trying to do now that we haven't been doing in, in the past is looking at all the enhancements that our ERP system has brought uh, to, the, to the system that we're not currently utilizing. And just to give you an example, some of you may be doing this, but the, the concept of zoning your warehouse. You know, right now they just they have a, a gun and they go all over the warehouse picking the order. And we're starting to break down the warehouse and zones and this individual works only in this zone and he's only picking a piece of the order and then that tote or that pallet or whatever goes to another zone and then that guy picks and it improves your efficiencies a lot so we're also trying to go back and just kind of look at some of the technologies that have been added to our system that we're not currently taking advantage of <laughs> that's a, a, a typical challenge obviously is there's a lot uh, there's a lot that's available uh, but the adoption sometimes lags, and right. uh, you know wh what are what what are the strategies uh, are you uh, working with to utilize the investments that that we've already made in many respects? Uh, you know, we talked earlier about uh, the, you know the youngsters having more of an aptitude, but uh, the the gray hairs like me have the domain uh, I expertise. How do you work together to meld that? Whether it's in the warehouse or sales or, or inside support or or whatever. I think one of the most important things that's often overlooked and um, isn't done well enough is training. Um, honestly, the biggest thing I can tell you is to train, 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 and then train some more. Upper management has got to be involved in the process. They need to be familiar with their employees and their adoption of it. And if they're not um, if there's something specific that they're not understanding, um, you need to take the time to make sure that they understand it. Nobody's going to want to adopt something that they don't understand. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of fear with adoption. So if you take away that fear by providing them with that proper training, 
I think they'll ease a lot more into it. I agree with that. I also agree that you got to really have upper management pushing it as well because, of course, upper management that wants it, they, they were the ones that signed off on it. But if you have them talking to the people that are actually using it on a regular basis, that sends a signal as well. And that's one thing that we've noticed um, with some of the technologies we recently implemented is if, if upper management's 100% in it and also helping with the training and, and reinforcing it, and that, that helps a whole lot as well. I'll go back to what I mentioned before of having a champion. So it's absolutely necessary that upper management is giving their support, but I think you have one person or you have to have one person that's really running it and pushing it and passionate about it. Um, like if I were to use an example of an intranet, if you were launching a new intranet, uh, internal social network or something, you really have to have somebody go department department and show them how to use it and say these are the benefits that might work best in your department. And then what comes after that is just persistence. If they don't adopt that one thing you showed them, maybe come back a month later and say, hey, I have something new, maybe this will work, try this out. And sharing success that other people have had on it, it it's, uh, it's a lot of work and, and time, and you have to be passionate about it or else it's probably going to get left behind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I think is, is really good is to um, explain to the employees why you're making that change um, a lot of times you know these decisions are made and nobody really knows why um, I think it can be to your advantage to try and explain to the employees the benefits that can happen by adopting this new technology um, and also getting um, some input from more of your, some of your forward-thinking employees I think that can be very beneficial because then it gets them engaged they become passionate and passion is a huge thing it motiv it can motivate your entire force um, to adopt a technology so the more people you can get engaged in the process I think the better off the adoption rate will be you know I'm sure we've all had some abject failures in, in adoption can uh, can any of you share some of the some of the things that you tried and the lessons you learned and things that perhaps didn't go so well? I think it's also important to take the time to do the proper R and D. Um, <laughs> a lot of times we we jump into things um, and we haven't taken the time to talk to other users of the technology and really understanding its strengths and weaknesses. Um, I know resources can be a huge thing. Oftentimes we, we try and cut corners and um, do things internally where we may not necessarily have the time or the expertise to launch it, and it ends up costing us more in the long run because we end up having to outsource. And, you know, at that point you've wasted time, you've wasted energy, you've wasted money. Um, so I think it's really important to really know what you want, keep that in scope, have a project lead, um, whether you know it's inter internal or you're outsourcing, and um, yeah. I think IT is pretty good at this, and I think marketing is pretty awful at this. <laughs> uh, but one important thing to keep in mind when you're adopting a new technology is how it communicates with the technology that already exists. And sometimes us silly marketers forget that. Um, but if you have a website and you've got a survey software and you've got email software, they all need to talk to each other. Otherwise, you're doing triple the work in updating databases that you don't have to update. Um, so that's something that people might not think about up front that uh, could lead to a failure. And then you'd have to backpedal and make them communicate. And um, there's just a possibility of unnecessary work there. Yeah, there was a, I guess it had been for the company for almost two years and we implemented a CM, CRM package, but we were using it for reporting. And uh, at that time, I, I was, you know, I, I, I didn't ask the right questions. I was just kind of letting management make the decisions and we went with it. And it didn't really work out very well. We ended up canning it. And then a couple of years ago, we, we went back to the pay table and, and what we really wanted was a business analytical tool. and um, and so we really did our due diligence on that and making sure that, you know, the tail wasn't wagging the dog, as I like to call it. You know, any, anybody can come in there and sell you a really awesome uh, application during the sales process. And 
And you're like, man, this is just great. You know, this will solve all my problems. But you really do need to get all those key people involved. Um, you got to get your end users involved and, and ask them the questions. And you got to find out what management wants from it. You know, you got to talk to IT and say, okay, is this going to work? You know, is it going to create triple the amount of work to get this in the system? Because now, you know, it's not integrated directly into our ERP. So we got this other server we got to set up and dump data there. And then we got to maintain that. And it's just a whole lot more work that goes on to it. So it's very important to bring in, you know, all your key people before you go in and invest in that technology. Um, that, that, that will help out a whole lot. So uh, we've definitely implemented stuff in the past that didn't work out because we didn't ask the right questions. Yeah, I think it's very important to have that whole picture um, and to involve, like you said, all the key people, um, you know, that are either going to use it or will have to implement um, part of the technology.